What's up YouTube? In this video I'm going to be talking about the top 5 R56 Mini Cooper S timing chain myths. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and stick around. You're going to want to watch this whole video. No matter which Mini Cooper you drive, check out my Facebook group. It's called Mini Cooper DIY. I'll leave a link to that in the description. Or you can just go to Facebook and type Mini Cooper DIY in the search bar. You can find it that way. Let's get to the video. Okay, the first myth. These aren't in any specific order. I just These are just 5 myths. But uh... The first one I want to bring up is the one I hear probably the most is everyone says that how bad the plastic is, how bad it is to use plastic for the timing chain guides. They say the problem with the N14 specifically is that they used chassis or plastic timing chain guides. Well, the thing is, they use plastic timing chain guides in the R53 as well, and as far as I know, they use plastic timing chain guides in every Mini Cooper, so I don't know why only the N14 gets the hate for it. But uh, not only that, what would you want them to use other than plastic? If you're using metal, you're gonna shoot sparks and metal shavings into your oil. You don't wanna do that. It's gonna, you're gonna have catastrophic engine failure. And uh, you know, if you, I'll go through it with the, with the rest of this list, but if you do everything you're supposed to do for, to keep your timing chain in order, these aren't gonna fail. It's very, it's gonna be pretty rare. These things will last you, you know, 80,000 miles, no problem. If you're changing your timing chain every 80,000 miles, you're not gonna have a problem having these plastic break. The second one I wanted to bring up is that a lot of people like to say that the N14 engine, which is what I have in my car, um, has timing chain tensioner issues that have been fixed with the N18. And that is true that the N18 doesn't have the timing chain tensioner issues that the first N14s had. But they did recalls and they fixed the issue with the N14. If you buy a new, like go to Detroit Tuned and buy the new updated kit, OEM, or a new OEM kit from anywhere, um, you're gonna get the updated timing chain tensioner and it's gonna last you the whole time that your timing chain is good, which is gonna be you know, 80,000 miles, 80 to 100,000 miles, which is, you should change it anyway at that point. The issue was with the old, with the old timing chain tensioners, I'm not sure if this is a, the new one or the old one, I couldn't find them, I couldn't find both of my old tensioners, but uh, this part right here was shorter on the old ones and they lengthened it. So what would happen was as, as your chain would, would wear, it would be looser so it'd start slapping around on the plastic and this thing wouldn't be long enough to keep it tight and the chain slapping around is what actually breaks the plastic it's not the plastic being a bad part or bad material to use it's the chain stretching not stretching it doesn't stretch but uh this the chain being loose and slapping against it and the the old style of tensioner didn't stick out far enough for long enough to hold it together Number three, I just alluded to in the last one, is the timing chains stretch. They do not stretch. This is a this is a timing chain out of N14. Uh, what happens is these pins right here go through a hole, and over time that hole gets worn out, which causes a, a small, really small gap, or the pin would fall out. But that you know that little gap between every single pin throughout this whole chain will make the chain longer because it's it's creating space. And the longer the chain gets, the more slap it's gonna have, the more likely it's gonna be to break your timing chain guides. But if you change it before that happens, which is why they give you a tolerance on the length of the chain, and there's a tool that you can buy to check it, check your, your length of your chain. Um, if, you check, if you change your chain before that, you're not gonna have that problem and it's not gonna be an issue. I also wanted to point out that a lot of people will say that the timing chains in the W11s or the R53s were less likely to stretch. You don't hear that very often because a lot of people don't. You hear it though, but this is why. I'm gonna tell you why right now. Like I said, they don't stretch. This is R53 over here, R56 over here. See the difference in the length? The same amount of wear on this chain is going to be way have way less impact on the length of the chain than this one, just because of the size difference. 
And number four is a lot of people will say that a timing chain is a lifetime part and shouldn't fail. That is not true. That has never been true. And I don't know why anybody says that. <laughs> you need to change your timing chain. And it's just like a timing belt. Uh, and timing belt might, a timing chain might last longer than a timing belt, but it's not a lifetime part. And if it fails, it's, you're gonna have the same result as if a timing belt fails. The difference is, if a timing belt, or when the timing chain starts to fail, you can hear it and it gives you a warning. A timing belt doesn't do that. That's why a timing chain is better. It's not a lifetime part. Okay, number five is that replacing the timing chain is either hard or too expensive. That's just not, I mean, it's not the case. You can replace your own timing chain. Uh, there's a link in the description to this video of when I replaced my timing chain on this car. I've done the timing chain on my R53. I have a link in my uh, in my videos. If you go to my R53 how-tos, I have a link to how to replace the timing chain in R53. They're both about the same difficulty level. They're not hard. Um, and if you take it to a mechanic, this is just one of those cars. If you can't afford stuff like routine maintenance, then you can't afford to drive the car. It's the wrong car for you. Um, buy a car that you can afford to maintain. Or if you can do the work yourself, a timing chain, if you get the good one from Detroit Tuned, the cryo-treated one, which is what I have in both of my cars, in my, uh, that's my dog, that's my dog Bella wearing her Carhartt jacket. She's a fashion model apparently. But anyway, uh, the Detroit Tuned timing chain is what I have in both my cars. The one in the R56, I believe, was $239. And uh, the only special tool you need to change it is the cam lock tool. It also comes with the, the flywheel lock tool. And that's like 100 bucks. So 230 bucks total, or 330 bucks total to replace your timing chain if you do it yourself. And then the other tools are just stuff that you should have anyway if you're working on your own cars. And so it's, it's really not that big of a deal. And my timing chain video, it's actually one of the longer ones on YouTube. It's because I did the video when I was new to YouTube and I wasn't really good at editing. And I showed you everything, every bolt. I didn't the whole time. So that two and a half hour video, that's how long you'll actually be working when you change your timing chain. It's about two and a half hours. The other time is just gonna be finding tools. So don't be afraid to buy a mini, any Mini Cooper, uh, especially, specifically the N14, that because of the plastic timing chain guides, because they all have plastic timing chain guides. The timing chain was only the issue before they updated the tensioner. And if you buy a good cryo-treated one from Detroit Tune, like I said earlier, it's gonna come with the new tensioner. It's not gonna be a problem. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like this video, give it a thumbs down. I'll catch you in the next video.